now to our first panellist, Dr. Jan Rosnow. Jan is the Principal and Director of European Programmes at the Regulatory Assistance Project, RAP, a global team of highly skilled energy experts. Jan is also Honorary Research Associate at Oxford University's Environmental Change Institute, and he's worked on energy efficiency and heating for more than 15 years and holds several board appointments, including the European Council for Energy Efficient Economy, the Coalition for Energy Savings, and the Efficiency Evaluation Organization. And in recognition of his work in the field, Jan was named by Onalytica as one of the world's top 25 digital energy influencers. So, over to Jan. So I'm going to um, do three things in my presentation today. First, I want to um, very briefly just share my personal experience with you before I uh, get into the main part of my presentation. Then I want to talk about the problem, you know, why is heating a problem, what can be done about it, that's my second part, the solution, and then finally what are the next steps that I would like to see to address this. So that's the structure for the next nine minutes. Let me start with the first of that um, items, so that is um, my personal experience. Uh, and heating is deeply personal, and I think that's, that's important to understand when we discuss decarbonization decarbonizing the power sector so far has not really um, uh, you know, meant any major changes in people's lives or how, how they live. Whereas you know, decarbonizing heating happens in our homes. So we have done that. We have um, mostly decarbonized our, our heating, um, reduced emissions by about 70%. Uh, we have a heat pump installed and we have insulated most of the walls and it re replaced all of the windows in the house. Uh, so about 70% reduction. I think Richard Lowe's, who's going to come on later, has achieved even steeper reductions, um, but that's about um, how much you can get 70-80% with the current um, mix uh, of renewables on the electricity system. So I'm not speaking just as an analyst about this topic, but really as a practitioner and someone who is who's learning about this every day in my own home. So let me now talk about the problem. Why is heating such a big issue and why are we having <clears throat> this discussion uh, today. When you look at the emissions of the UK's residential heating sector, you can compare that against the European peers in, in Europe and you will see, this is the, um, the red uh, box here with a scattered line, you can see that the UK is doing rather badly compared to its peers. So the emissions in grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour are rather high. And also the improvement when you compare the 1990 reference point, which is the black dot here, is relatively small. Compare that to Sweden, for example, on the left-hand side of this graph, and you see that Sweden has a much cleaner heating system and they have made huge inroads into decarbonization over the last um, 30 years. So we're not doing well on, on carbon intensity in, in, in the UK. And that's mainly because we use a, a lot of gas about 85, 86% of homes use gas. The second reason is we have a very small share of renewable heat. This is some recent data from Eurostat, and you can find the UK at the bottom of this ranking in Europe. Uh, it's uh, the third from the bottom together with Ireland and the Netherlands, the bottom three countries. Um, again, when you look at the top of this, uh, this graphic, you can see countries like Sweden, uh, but also Latvia, Finland, Estonia, Denmark doing rather well on the share of renewable heat. Um, so the UK has a lot of work to do uh, to catch up. This would look very different for the power sector. You know, when we look at the electricity system, the UK performed rather well and has cleaned up the electricity system at a very, very high speed uh, and would sit um, uh, you know, probably in the top third of this, of this graphic um, for electricity. So that's, that is a significant problem um, in terms of the emissions, but there's also a huge exercise to be done around educating the public. Um, and you know, when you look at uh, any surveys that have been done on this, you will find that the awareness that gas boilers or heating more broadly is a problem is very low. Uh, so here's some, some data from Ipsos Mori that was published in 2019, comparing different interventions that the public think would be important. And you can see gas boilers rank very low on the list. Petrol and diesel vehicles take the top spot. And that's even though gas boilers have pretty much the same emissions as all petrol and diesel vehicles 
in the UK. Um, so that, that's um, just an interesting, um, I think, fact to recognize that the public is not aware of gas or fossil fuel heating more generally being an issue. Um, and also most people don't plan to install low carbon heating systems. <clears throat> so the majority of people is very unlikely to do that, uh, which again is causing the problem. If we wanna decarbonize heating, we have to replace or start replacing fossil heating systems at a much higher rate that we are currently doing. But there's also some good news when we ask the public, a lot of people are in favor of phasing out gas boilers. Um, so when you look at the, the third of these um, um, two, uh, categories uh, from the left, you see the gas boiler uh, phase out as a policy and most people are in favor um, of that with a small minority being against it. So that's um, a, a bonus. So a lot of people think that is actually something that should happen, even though they don't know why it needs to happen at this point. Um, so that's where we are in the current discussion. Um, so we have a lot of work to do. We have um, a lot of education to do and discussion with the public, but how do we actually get there? What, what needs to happen? Um, so that's the second part of my presentation. What's the solution gonna look like? Uh, and in, in um, October last year, um, the UK Energy Research Center uh, published a report which I led and which uh, Richard and also I think Graeme contributed to um, that I will very briefly summarize um, on my next slide. So we modeled the um, least cost pathway to net zero emissions in the heating sector. And this is the result of the modeling. I want you to focus on the conservative 2050 and progressive 2050 scenarios that you see on this rather busy chart. And you can see to get to 100% reduction of emissions, you have to um, phase out gas heating completely. And the main solutions that are being identified by the modeling are um, heat pumps, uh, district heating and energy savings. And in combination, you get to net zero by, uh, by doing that. Um, this is, of course, a huge ask, you know, it's a huge transformation that needs to happen, but these are the solutions we have already today that can be deployed, uh, just need to be deployed at a much higher rate. What does this mean? Um, if we translate the 29 million homes that uh, have been mentioned already um, in the first presentation, this is about 19,000 homes that need some form of upgrade every week. And that is because most homes are currently not ready for net zero um, for 2050. So most homes will need some form of upgrade. Uh, and that's a huge number. We're currently doing a fraction of that. And when we look at specific measures, specific technologies, you can, you can identify where the gap is the largest. So the, the green homes here, the green houses, the symbols show you what is currently being installed every year. And the blue houses show you what needs to happen to meet the net zero goals in 2050 per year. And you can see that there's a big gap for all of the key measures. Just to take one of them, heat pumps, it would take 700 years to meet net zero targets at the current rate of installation. So a huge job ahead of us. Um, and we, we, we simply can't go on at the same speed or we will meet, miss the climate targets for the heating sector and for the country. But, and this is positive, the level of ambition is rising. I'm, I'm sure many of you will have seen the 10 point plan that the Prime Minister published um, last year. And um, in there is a target for 600,000 heat pumps per year by 2028. And there's currently an investigation underway by the uh, committee, the Environmental Oil Committee, in the House of Commons, um, how this can be achieved. So that's positive, we have a target. Now we need to find out how to get there. One more slide and then I stop. So how do we meet those 600,000 um, heat pumps? Just to pick one of the measures that are very, very important in decarbonizing heating. Current incentives, and I'm not gonna go into any detail here, but they're mainly financial support programs are delivering only a small fraction of what is needed of the 600,000. We will have some regulation. Um, we expect that to come in in 2023, at the latest of 2025, they will in effect require the installation of a heat pump in most new build homes and the home um, building rate right now I think is a bit more than 100,000 actually the last year it was more than 200,000 um, so that will deliver a significant amount of um, heat pumps.
but still not the majority. We still have a gap that needs to be filled um, and how they can be filled, we can probably come back to that in the discussion later um, on the panel discussion, but key elements of that will have to be some form of rebalancing fuel costs and some form of regulation in order to accelerate the speed of deployment. I stop here and I look forward to the discussion. Thanks a lot.